what's going on guys, James over at Tackle Express and this is the intro to how to catch a bluefin on a jig just like this. Guys, just like any other style of fishing, jigging for these triple digit bluefin is very condition oriented. Just because they were eating one jig yesterday doesn't mean that's going to be the same jig they're eating tomorrow, but could, we could well be. Just depends on the conditions we have out there. So I highly recommend if you're going to be going out there jigging these big bluefin, have a variety of different option jigs in there from something like a 200 gram flat fall, a nice broad profile slow falling jig through the water column, all the way up to something into your 320. 400, 500 gram knife jig, something that's gonna rock it through those water columns just in case those fish are sitting farther down in the water column. It's very dependent where those fish are gonna be sitting on how we're gonna get that jig down to them and that's when they're gonna eat them. So when we grab that jig off the counter, it must be upgraded from the hooks to the leader to the swivels, guys. We are gonna put something, something like that guy, big, nice, upgraded mustad J hook on the bottom or sometimes even a nice travel hook depending on the type of jig that we are using. Um, going from that, we are also not only gonna be having that hook down on the bottom, we will also be adding a separate assist hook up on top. But that guy's gonna do the hopes of this assist hook is this guy grabs him down in the gullet and this guy finds a place somewhere in the mouth that fish can't breathe and wants to come straight to the boat. However, it doesn't always work that well. So that is why we slap on some 200 to 300 pound leader to these guys, sometimes even 400 pound if we're fishing a lot at night. What that's gonna do is give us a fighting chance. Say that tuna swallows that little jig like 160 gram flat fall, it's gonna be down his gullet and halfway through his belly. So now we're gonna be rubbing on his teeth. These bluefin do have teeth. The longer the fight, the longer, the bigger the chance that fish may chew through your line. So we like to have a nice chafing leader on top of that jig just to help our fighting chance of actually landing that triple digit bluefin guys. So now we're gonna have all these different jigs in our box that must be rigged and we're rigging them. Every single one's gonna have that upgraded chafing, uh, upgraded hooks on there as well as the chafing leader, upgraded uh, swivels. However, now we're gonna have a boatload of jigs all rigged in our boxes that we're gonna try to keep from tangling each other that we wanna be able to swap out as fast as possible because when we're on these fish, they don't stop. They come under the boat and they're gone just as fast as they came under. So that's why we're here at Tackle Express, James and Harry put together the Jerry Rig. This guy makes for change of jigs super easy. I know how before I was talking, we like to go to a solid ring to those hooks because we've heard and seen split rings by. I have this hook here on a swivel, as well as a swivel at the top of my chafing leader. There is no way this guy's gonna bind, as well as that is a 350 pound mustad saltism split ring. So that there, not only now, I went from fishing, which was a 250 gram SK and a zebra grow, because now these fish are up higher in the water column and I see them swimming through a little faster, I might go to something like a 200 gram SL. This guy's gonna not only still have that knife jig profile darting down through the water column, it's not gonna go as fast and not gonna rocket past those fish that are sitting at 180, 200, 200 feet biting. However, say I'm fishing this 200 gram jig and then the captain starts calling these fish in 300, 400, gram, 400 feet, I'm probably not gonna be using this 200 gram jig. With the ease of my jerry rig and a pair of split ring pliers, I'm gonna take this rig right off and I'm gonna slap back on, I'm gonna go on to oh, something like a 300 gram West Coast Jiggers or a Mustad Rip Roller of that nature. And just like I took it off, it's gonna go right back on. This Jerry Rig, it not only is gonna make it ease quick of changing out jigs, it's also gonna allow you to take your jigs off at night. There's a lot of boat time and travel time when you're looking for these bluefin. Captains and crew do not like these jigs banging on their boat and you don't like them banging and scratching up your reels. So this allows you to take that jig off, put the jig in your bag, and leave a hook just attached to your rod, ready to fish when those fish come under the boat. Um, so we're gonna ta tackle into not only that we had upgraded the bottom hooks, we are also upgrading the assist hooks. What the assist hook, this is not your bread and butter hook. It is a stronger hook, and we have seen just the assist hooks alone land these fish. But the assist hook's biggest thing is to help counterweight that jig flying around that fish, digging a hole into that tuna's mouth. So we like to use stuff like this here. This is a must-add J-assist 
upgraded assist hook here at the bottom of my Daiwa SL jig. Now that we've broken down these jigs, guys, we are gonna start talking rods and reels. This, in my opinion, is the most important part. Yay, you hooked one. You ain't getting it to the boat unless you have the proper gear. And that, me guys, we are talking Talica 20s, HXWs, Speedmaster 25s, International 30s, International 50s. These fish are mean. So we need a reel that's going to be pumping out somewhere 30 plus pounds of drag, achieving anywhere from four to 800 yards of line. And like something on a Talica 20, we're going to be spooling this guy up with 80 pound or 100 pound Power Pro Max Quattro. That's going to be the 25% thinner braid to achieve that line capacity on this reel because it is a very powerful reel for its compact size. Or something as like this, the Osha Jigger 4000, a reel that's going to be picking up a lot of inches per crank, hold a boatload of line, and achieve the speed jigging aspect of fishing these knife jigs for these triple digit fish. Another great option, however, it's a star drag, may give you a harder, more struggling in the fight, depending on the grade of the fish. But reels like your Talicas, your Internationals, your Avid HXWs, those are gonna be two speed reels. That is gonna be a feature you will need on these fish. When you hook this fish down below the boat on the jig, it's gonna be probably somewhere between 100 and 400 feet deep. You're gonna hook this fish and he is gonna step up. He's gonna scream this line off of your big reels, go straight up towards the surface, and next thing you know, you're gonna be scoped out as far as you can see your line go with a giant fish on the end of it. That, guys, we are gonna keep the reel in high that entire part of the fight, just in case that fish decides to turn and charge the boat. You're gonna feel you lost that fish because everything's gonna go slack. Turn that reel a little faster, catch up to that fish, and everything's gonna bend right back over because that fish just turned around and decided to charge the boat because they are very smart. They have, not all of them, but some of them have been hooked before and they do not wanna come right to the boat because they know what's gonna happen. So, the second that fish decides to settle in into what we call a pinwheel. A pinwheel is when the bluefin comes to its end of its fight, sits somewhere down about 100, 200 feet and starts spiraling its way up. Sometimes we will see these fish get stuck in the pinwheel. That is when this button right here on most of our two speed reels like an Avid, a Shimano, International, we're gonna bump that guy into low. What that's gonna do is lower our gear, gear ratio, giving us more torque, less inches per crank, but a lot more torque to turn that fish's head and bring him up out of the depths. And this is gonna be at the last, last minutes of your fight, this fish is gonna be pinwheeling. That is when we're gonna need to pull the hardest and really bring this fish up. So he doesn't catch wind and decide to take that other run back out, uh, out into the ocean. So definitely wanna make sure you guys have the right reels. Talica 20s, putting something 80 to 100 pound braid on there or even something like uh, Abbott HXW. This is probably one of the most inexpensive, smallest reels that I've seen catch the biggest fish. You put a 100 pound Power Pro Max Quattro on this guy, achieve just under 700 yards of line, and I've seen some giants caught on it. But that's not the end of it. Because you got the nice reel, we have to make sure we put it on the properly rated rod. A lot of people don't know, but our rods are actually rated to the top shots and stuff we are fishing. When we are fishing these triple digit fish, we are going to need something in the XH, double XH, all the way up to 4XH. And that's something between a 40 to 100 pound, 50 to 100, 60 to 120, and some of these 80 to unlimited rods. Whether it be a United Composites, Viper, Invictus, or Gladiator, or some other people's favorites, the new Calstar 775 Double XH. Been a very great unlimited rod out there. Um, one of my personal favorites is my Shimano Therese. This guy is rated up to 200 pound braid rating. It's a nice, very parabolic rod, which allows me not to pull too hard to where I'm gonna rip, rip the jig out of the, out of the fish's mouth if I do hook it in a soft spot. It's just gonna apply enough pressure to get that jig to turn its head and come up to the boat. Because we don't always know where we hook these fish when we hook them on these jigs, I highly recommend pull as hard as you physically can within the first five minutes of the fight. Because if you're, anything's gonna fail, if you're gonna pull a hook, it's better to know in the first five minutes than the last five minutes after that fish is out, drain all of your energy. So when you hook that thing, make sure your drag is set proper, Hold on and pull as hard as you can. And when we're fighting these fish, it comes down to, we call these rail rods. 
Don't think you are gonna be stronger than this triple digit bluefin that's swimming thousands and thousand miles a year. This rod has the extended foregrip and that is for the reason of setting it on the rail. And when we set this rod on the rail, that's when we're gonna get comfortable and all we need to know is keep a bend in it and turn that handle. And as long as we do that, keep a bend in the rod and turn that handle, that fish will come to the boat and you'll be rewarded with a triple digit bluefin on a jig, guys. And a quick bonus tip for you from the guys over here at Tackle Express. Once you hook that triple digit fish on the jig, guys, relax, breathe, catch your breath. You just did it. Hooked a fish of a lifetime. And as long as you turn that turner, set that rod on that rail, that fish will end up on the deck right beside you. Any questions or concerns, feel free to comment below, swing by the shop, ask one of the guys, follow us on social media, and also subscribe, guys. Thank you so much, and good luck out there.